Hi, I'm Eleanor Burns. Welcome to my series, Through the Seasons. Oh, I've stitched up a set of new quilts for you, one for each month of the year. Well, each season has three different projects, a total of 12 new projects. Well, you can bring the out of doors inside and decorate with seasonal colors in floral prints. Well, I have a medley of quilts to share with you. Let's just bundle up and step into winter. Well, the morning star quilt gives a warm, cozy feeling to frosty days. It's perfect in traditional rich scarlet and wintergreen holiday colors. And even more perfect are those flying geese patches turned into crisp star points. It's the flying geese ruler that makes them so perky. Well, hang the charming lodgepole pine quilt on your showcase wall. Now you can decorate those three strip piece branches with Christmas bows or just jazz up the trees with bright red cardinals. Make my crazy valentine for your favorite school chum and embellish it with your collected treasures. Now this valentine will last a lifetime. I'll show you how to paper piece to your heart's content. Well, just as the snow is melting, sunny daffodils emerge under clear blue skies. Blue baskets filled with pretty posies set the theme. Now those posies overflowing into the beautiful bow stripe are done the quilt in a day way of applique. The Twin Sisters quilt is just fresh and cheerful and springy blues and yellows with a crisp white accent. Now this is no April Fools. Two blocks are made with two half strips. Those colorful fish are sure to delight children of any age as they swim in cool, clear blue water. Those sharp fins just float by. They're made perfect with our squaring up ruler. So hang a sign on a delightful spring day. Gone fishing. Warm, lazy summer afternoons lend themselves to a jam session with the American Beauty quilt. Beautiful fussy cut roses adorn the small quarter circles. You can just zip up the fusible interfacing blocks on your machine and then relax on the porch finishing up the blocks. The summer porch quilt fits right in with a comfy white wicker chair and just piles of lovely summer fabric in shades of pink, blue, and green. Well, a nine and a half inch square up ruler makes this block as snappy as garden fresh green beans. Sip on a refreshing glass of pink lemonade with a quilt by the same name. Flying geese patches in country pink check surround the floral fussy cut centers. Well, the fussy cut ruler makes a summer hot day feel cooler. Well, we're breezing into fall with Buckeye Beauty, perfect for taking off the cool evening chill. Well, the colors just remind me of Butternut squash. You can use up your scrappy five inch squares just too good to toss out. Cover up on an old fashioned hayride with country lane. Well, hopefully the driver will know just which lane to take. It's strip pieced quite quickly and the blocks are set together with ball garden fabric. The holidays would not be complete without the historic horn of plenty with fall leaves, a sunflower, and a pumpkin stitched on fusible interfacing. This table runner has a lot to be thankful for. It's a perfect ending to a celebration of the seasons. You will love these 12 new projects with easy techniques. So join me.
Do you remember when we were growing up? About a week before February 14th, everyone brought their Valentines to school and deposited them in homemade boxes. Well, occasionally, a boy would be so enamored he would give a very special Valentine. Well, it's still fun to give Valentines to our best friends and family members. My sister Patty made me a valentine that holds a lifetime of memories. She printed the four of us sisters on a piece of fabric. Well, we always posed in the order of our ages. So this is Kathy, the oldest one, and then I'm next, and then with Patty, just 15 months younger beside me, and last, my baby sister, Judy. Well, she did such a nice job embellishing it. And I had fun with this one. And I named it When Pigs Fly. I embellished it with some ribbon roses, some buttons, and some rickrack. Well, there are so many things we can get done when pigs fly. So let's get to it. The Crazy Quilt Heart is done with paper piecing or foundation piecing. It's very popular today. Now you start out with a pattern printed on paper. This is an eight inch square and you do your sewing right on the paper. Well, the advantage is that you always have very sharp corners and there's no matching. Sounds good, sounds easy. Now there are only five different parts on this paper pattern. You start right in the middle with number one. That's a fussy cut. Well, I took and made another one. I turned it into a template. So I cut out number one. I can see what that fussy cut looks like. Well, select a fabric, your inspiration fabric. Well, I picked a bear for the Bear's Paw Ranch. And then there's two dogs. Of course, it's Tabitha and Peanut. And when you take this template and place it just like this, this is the fussy cut that you're going to get really cute. Well, if you're lucky enough to have a granddaughter, how about a flying ballerina with little wings on it? If you just turn this around, this is the image that you can go ahead and center just like this. Really cute. Well, this is the pattern that I'm working on right here. I already did one with the very center inspiration as a rose in red and green. Once you have that inspiration piece selected, then you pick two different color families. Of course, red and green for these two. So that this one is number two red and number three red opposite each other. And then this is four in the green and five. And then you can see all the really cute trim that I did. Well, that very center rose is a six and a half inch fussy cut. I have this great ruler that makes it easy. There's an X on it, so I just go ahead and center the rose right on that X. Well, let's just go ahead and play. I was thinking that maybe this one would be just a great center. That's looking good. So if I get my center right there, it's gonna be perfect. So just put your ruler Center your fussy cut. Now this is extra large. You want to have your piece for your paper piecing at least an inch larger. This is a lot larger, so I'm not going to miss it. Well, I put it on a rotating mat so I don't even have to pick it up. Just keep on turning it right around, cutting that little six and a half inch fussy cut right out of the middle. Actually, it looks like Swiss cheese by the time you're done working. We'll just get rid of that. We can get more fussy cuts out of it. Now you want to put the, the fabric on the plain side of the paper and you actually put that so that it's right side up and then the opposite side is the paper. Well, so that you can center that flower perfectly, a light table is really useful. So let's put the fabric down. It is right side up. Here's the top. We've got to find the top of the flower. Let's move that around. Ah, that's looking good. So I have the rose centered underneath exactly like I would like to have it in the finished um, heart. So let's just put a pin right through there. That's looking good. Now, number two is the red. I want to sew on the line between one and two so that I Hit that mark. I'm just going to take this and fold on that line. Give it a nice, good crease like that. Oh, it's looking good. 
Now let's get rid of the light table so we have room to work. Okay, so now I've got the crease. I'm going to look on this side and just make sure your fabric number two covers. Oh, plenty, lots of extra. So this crease is important. When I flip it right sides together, I need to make sure that I'm overlapping that quarter inch seam, or it could even be more because there's plenty there. How about let's just do some pins on each side. This is just a lightweight paper so that you can actually stitch on the lines, see everything that's going on. Now, turn it over from the mark side, and this is the side that you do the um, stitching on. I put a large needle in. This is a number 14 needle, or you could even do a number 16 needle. I'm perfing the paper because we're going to tear it away soon. And then just cut your threads, just sew on the lines. Very important. Teresa says that's the most important thing, just sew on the lines. Now, how about get those pins out of the way, fold back on that crease, and then take your ruler and you can line up your quarter inch line right along there so that you get that quarter inch seam left. I want to make sure I don't have any pins. Oh, I just have a fresh blade. Okay, so you just trim off that extra fabric, take your fabric, get rid of it. Let's go from the uh, plain side of the paper, open up that fabric, and just use your wooden iron to do a nice press. Okay, now, Got fabric one, fabric two, how about number three? Let's see, okay, right here it is. We're gonna take it, fold it back, crease on the number three line, and take that number three fabric. And the number three fabric has to cover over, you do it in the reverse. Okay, flip this like this, and a pin or two would be just great to hold it in place. Where is that pin? It's underneath. That's the confusing part about paper piecing. I always feel like I'm doing it backwards. Okay, again, just sew on the line. Needle down on the end of the line. This is a 15 to 18 stitch length. It's very short. So that also helps perf the paper. Okay, we've got two lines, the whole center done. Let's just fold back the paper on the number three line and fold everything back out of the way. No pins. And line up that quarter inch seam. Trim the extra and get rid of it. I'm good at that part. Now, we've got the whole center part of the crazy quilt done. And at this time, it would be a great time to just do some top stitching of lace. I, I selected two different colors. This one is a nice ecru. I just top stitched along here, put pins on the ends so that my stitching didn't go past the pins, and then some roses with green on both seams. So let's just pick up with this one and keep on going. The next number, number three, number four. Oh my gosh, let's get number four. Here it is right here. Gonna take it. Fold it on the line, get that creasing in there, and then once again, just take the number four fabric. This is number four. It's going to cover like that. Place it so that you've got that quarter inch seam. Pin it on this side, and then do the sewing from the mark side. It's exactly the same thing with number five. We're just going to fast forward right through there. That's going to cover that part. Well, I'm going to go ahead, get these sewn on there, and I'll show you some decorative stitching. I have been going crazy on this heart. Well, I added numbers four and five to this whole center, and then this is what it looks like from the back side, all stitched through. Lots of extra fabric around the outside edge to trim away. Well, I just sewed lace on there. Oh, that is the easiest way that you can go. But look how you can just jazz up that plain lace. Sue took some seed pearls, stitched them on top, and they really make it look different. And a little bit of rickrack with seed pearls. Now when she got to here, oh, she got out her hand stitching, did some flowers, put little 
little buttons right on top. So cute. Well, Teresa's mom did this crazy quilt, and it is beautiful with all this handwork. Well, she used silk ribbon. You can see the stitches right along here. She did a little trio of flowers, and look at this. How simple is it? Just a zigzag. Well, there's no way I do that four-letter H word. So I've been experimenting with my machine. Now, with the silk ribbon, it's four millimeter. I just did a very large zigzag stitch along there. This is just a straight stitch, a big long stitch, and this is a serpentine. And you can see from the back side what those stitches look like. Well, you don't have to have a fancy machine to do it. You just need to have your four millimeter silk ribbon. I've been experimenting with my bobbin winding. This goes on your bobbin. I found out if you just pull off about three yards. That's going to fill your bobbin perfectly. Now, if you have one of these bobbins that have a really big hole in it, it works better. You cut your uh, ribbon on the slant and you can just put it right through that hole. Let me grab it. Well, it's there, right through. Okay, hold on to that. This is the most important part. This machine winds bobbin so quickly. I've just got my uh, silk ribbon loose. I'm going to push my button and more or less help hand guide it right onto that bobbin. That is it. That fast. Now, this goes in your um, bobbin and you don't put it through the tension. Just loose. Leave it loose. Put your cover on. Grab hold of your thread. Now I have matching thread uh, to the silk ribbon. I'm going to pull that silk ribbon up out of the bobbin. Hold on to that. Select a large open stitch. Got a little bit too much thread coming out the back end. But you sew from the paper side. I selected a feather stitch. It's number 28. It's large, open, didn't even do anything with it. I'm just going to sew on that line. And boy, with that big leader of silk ribbon hanging out the back, I hope I have enough to go the whole way across. You know, next to Christmas cards, the Valentine is the best-selling holiday card. Amazing. Now, are you ready for the surprise? Look at this. There's the beautiful stitching right along there. And I could also do another one over on this side. It would be perfect. Now comes the fun part. You get to tear away all of the paper. Oh, let's just grab hold of it, work at it, get rid of it. Kind of hold down those stitches so you don't pop them out. We'll tear away all of the paper and you're ready for the heart. I've got one already cleared away. Look at that. Now, the heart is a crochet doily. It's about nine inches across in both directions. I spray starched it so it was in really good condition, ready to go. Now, so that I can make a pattern, I did a photocopy of that, that doily, and then I took, folded it in half, and cut out my heart. It's just really like making Valentines for kids. Just cut along the outside edge along before all of those nice little appendages. Okay, so then comes fusible interfacing. It is lightweight, non-woven fusible. You take the uh, smooth side, put your pattern on, pattern on there and trace around there. And this is going to go right on top. Center it, look around, move it around so that you're sure you like the placement of it. And then all I need to do is just sew in the line with about 18 to 20 stitches to the inch. Now, if you don't want to do a heart, look what my sister Patty did. It's just so pretty. She cut her crazy quilt into a square and then just put lace around the outside edge, some beautiful roses, and she's got another Valentine gift. Well, let me finish this. I'll show you how to go on. I stitched around the outside edge of the heart on that fusible interfacing and then trimmed to about one eighth inch away. Well, I cut this hole in the back of the interfacing so I can just pop this heart right side out. 
And there are so many different tools that you can use to make nice curves. I like this one. It's got a nice curve on it and it's also got a point. So just run the tool around the inside. Just push out those outside edges. Ooh, and look at this. See if we can get a sharp point right down here. Looking good. Well, I'd like to stuff it up a little bit. Nothing like a little stuffing. This is 100% cotton. I cut it the same shape as the heart. You just start on the wrong side. Hemostats make the job really easy. Just grab hold of the stuffing and just pull it out to the corners. One piece and then the other piece. Oh, I hope I can fit that in there. Grab this one and just stick it in. And now work around the outside edge making sure it's out there. Oh, let me see, just a little bit more. There, that looks good. Now, I already have my doily centered on my 10 inch background square. So I'm just gonna put that right on top, get that all lined up. Ooh, it's looking good. Now you could choose to use your doily or not, whatever you'd like. That's the best part, it's yours. Well, I want to stitch by machine around the outside edge with the blanket stitch. Now, so it looks like handwork, I use two black threads. I, I set them up so that they run right through the one needle. So it's just a heavy looking thread. It'll give a nice dimension. Oh, we're into fooling everybody, thinking we're doing all the handwork, huh? Well, I'm gonna use needle down, get the outside edge lined up with the edge of the heart. And then you just take straight stitches on the background and then it just takes that bite in. Let me just take a couple of stitches so I can show you how that's going to look. Oh, it's beautiful. Just stop right there and you can see how it's looking. It's going perfect right around. Whoa, I've got my thread stuck in there. There it is, looks more like handwork. Now, I could do some more embellishment. I could do some roses. That would be great. Put them all over the place. How about some buttons? As much as you want. Once you finish that, then you're into the borders. They're easy to do. They are just three inches wide. I used a stripe. Now, you're going to put the two opposite borders like this. And then you have cornerstones. You're going to attach your cornerstones to your stripe first. Let me just lay that in place and then that's gonna fit right on there. Look at that, it's looking good. Gonna have another Valentine gift ready. Now, that after the borders are sewn on, then you're gonna do your machine quilting. You can just do a stippling all around the outside edge. You can do a quarter inch quilting around here. And for one more little bit of embellishment, you could even add some rickrack. And that'll finish it off perfect. Oh, I have some beautiful antique crazy quilts to share with you. Crazy quilts became popular after the 1876 Philadelphia Centennial Exposition when one of the most popular exhibits was the Japanese Pavilion. Well, this beautiful crazy quilt was made in 1885. You can see the date right here as part of this military insignia with a red, white, and blue shield and swords. Ooh, it's beautiful. It's made of velvet, silk, and brocade fabric. They're just cut and pieced in random shapes. And the hand stitching is just fantastic and very symbolic. Here's a pair of owls for wisdom. One poor owl has a bandage around its head, possibly for a husband injured in the Civil War just 20 years past. With, with the war between the states fresh in the stitcher's mind, this person may be a slave looking tired and broken with a crow or raven. Well, even today, Crazy quilting continues. Now this beautiful one was made recently by Nancy Anderson, and I was the lucky one to purchase it at the Quilters Hall of Fame auction. 
just has beautiful hand embroidered birds and butterflies with tiny buttons and beads. You know, Nancy's husband, Paul, helped her by doing some of her housework so she could have this ready for the auction. Well, women's magazines in the late 1800s published embroidery patterns to be used on the new crazies. And they even gave plans for crazy tea parties. So try to keep your sanity about you and enjoy making your crazy valentine. Mm -hmm.